Hi, welcome to this example on solving this trick equation here. 3 minus 3 cos theta equals 2 sine squared theta. For theta, greater than or equal to minus 180 degrees, but less than or equal to 180 degrees. So, how do we solve trick equations like this? Well, the first thing I notice is that it is not in the same trigonometric function. We've got a mixture here, we've got a cosine theta and we've got a sine theta function here. So I'd be thinking to try and get this into the same trig function. And because I've got a squared function here it makes me think of the trigonometric identity, this one here, which I'll just write down for you. And it is sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identical to 1. And if I make sine squared theta the subject by subtracting cos theta, cos squared theta from both sides, we end up with sine squared theta is identical to 1 minus cos squared theta. And so I can use this by substituting 1 minus cos squared theta in place of sine squared theta. And what I'll have is one equation in terms of one trig function cos theta. So what I'd encourage you to do is to try and remember this identity, all right? Because you're going to find that you're going to use it quite a lot in questions like this. So if we make that substitution, what we therefore have is 3 minus 3 cos theta is equal to 2. And then we're going to substitute 1 minus cos squared theta then in for the sine squared theta. So we've got 1 minus cos squared theta. Now we'll expand this and we get 3 minus 3 cos theta equals 2 times 1 is 2 and then 2 times the minus cos squared theta gives 2 cos squared theta. Now what we've got is a quadratic equation now in terms of cos theta. And so what we need to do is to rearrange this to make it equal to 0. So I'm going to add 2 cos squared theta to both sides and also subtract 2 from both sides. So what that's going to give me is 2 cos squared theta. Then I come in with the minus 3 cos theta. And then 3 take away the 2 gives plus 1 and that equals 0. Now if I'm solving a quadratic equation, I generally look to see if it factorizes and this one does. A couple of brackets like so equals 0 and we're going to have 2 cos theta and cos theta at the front of the brackets. That's going to multiply out to give me my 2 cos squared theta. And then at the rear of the brackets two numbers are multiplied together to give plus 1 and that would be in this example minus 1 and minus 1 because then you're going to get minus 2 cos theta minus another cos theta which is going to be minus 3 cos theta. So there you have it factorized. And when it's factorized we can then go on to say that either one of these factors equals 0. So therefore 2 cos theta minus 1 would equal 0 or the other factor cos theta minus 1 would equal 0. And if I add 1 to both sides here and divide by 2 I end up with cos theta equals a half. And for the other one, if I just simply add 1 to both sides, I get cos theta equals 1. Now, sometimes it might be difficult to factorize your quadratic equation. And if it is, then you can turn to the quadratic formula. Normally the quadratic formula is ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught. But in this particular example, it's a quadratic in cos theta. So it would be of the form a cos squared theta plus b cos theta plus c equals zero. And by the quadratic formula, it normally is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. But in this particular example, because x is now being replaced by cos theta, it would be cos theta equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And in this example, 
the A would be the 2, the B would be minus 3, and the C would be 1. And if you pop those values into the formula, you should find that you get cos theta equals a half and cos theta equals 1 when you take the plus or minus options. All right? So you've got two ways then of getting down to this stage here. Okay, so once we've got to this stage, we need to solve each of the equations. So let's start with when cos theta equals a half. Right? So we'll just put this here, when cos theta equals one half. Well, if I was solving this, I would most probably draw a quadrant diagram. You could do it by a graphical method, but I think I, I prefer anyway the quadrant diagram methods for this kind of thing. And we've got cos theta equals a positive number. So cos theta is positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So I'm marking two lines equally inclined to the horizontal line. This is the method that we use and mark in that those two angles are the same. We now need to mark in our possible values of theta and because the range of theta is minus 180 to 180 I start from here and if I turn in an anti-clockwise direction that is angles between naught and 360 degrees. So I can turn to the first blue line here, that's a possible theta. But if I was to go all the way around to this blue line, I would have gone more than 180 degrees. So I can't turn right the way around to that one. What I've got to do is start from here and turn in the other direction to this blue line here. Turning in this direction is a negative angle, and so that angle there will also be now less than the... Uh, minus 180, okay? So minus 180 would be to turn to there. So let's get these angles to get them. All I need to do is inverse cos both sides to give me theta equals the inverse cos of a half. And if you do this on your calculator, make sure you're in degrees mode for this example, you're going to find that you get theta equals 60 degrees. And this corresponds to the red theta here. So this angle here, this little blue one, is 60 degrees. That means this one here is 60 degrees. But because we're turning in the clockwise direction, the negative sense, then the green theta will be minus 60 degrees. So we have plus or minus 60 degrees as a possible solution in this range. What about the other one when cos theta equals... 1, let's just put this over here, when cos theta equals 1. You should really know this uh, answer, actually. Theta would equal the inverse cos of 1. And to do this, you could use a quadrant method or a graphical method. And if we were using a graphical method, then you should know that if we're drawing the graph of y equals cos theta, that graph is going to look something like this. From 0 to 360 degrees, it would start at 1. 90 degrees, it's 0. 180 degrees, it's minus 1. 270, it's 0. 360 degrees, it's 1 again. If we were going in the other direction, at minus 90 degrees, it's 0. Minus 180 degrees, it's negative 1. Minus 270, 0 one again at minus 360 degrees. So where is cos theta equal to one? Well clearly in this range it's going to be simply at zero. And you'd get that result if you inverse cos that on your calculator. Theta equals zero. And it would be the only solution in this range. Okay, so we have our solutions, and normally what I would always suggest is that you do a summary, and that is gather all your solutions together, and if we write them in ascending order, we would have minus 60 degrees, then naught degrees, and then 60 degrees. All right, and that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.